In terms of the defense of Guam, your second priority, um, the architecture is taking shape now. Um, can you tell me more about what is in the works, you know, what you need to get done in the next several years? Um, and then also what you're hoping this will teach, I think, missile defense overall, um, you know, homeland, what, what can be applied to potentially homeland missile defense, for, for instance, or sure. other places in the Pacific, Hawaii, for instance. Um, so, uh, you know, we, we have seen that I think Congress has backed off a little bit on the, on the homeland uh, missile defense radar in Hawaii and wants to see where things are going in Guam. So um, obviously a lot of eyes are on this. <laughs> sure. Yeah, we, so we learned a lot uh, from Hawaii. Um, that, uh, that radar was designed to uh, really protect the islands from the, the rogue threat, which we know will continue to evolve and become uh, more complex uh, over time. Uh, our issue became sighting. <laughs> and uh, sighting is tough. We, we dealt a lot with that when we were building LRDR, Long Range Discrimination right. Radar, up in Alaska. Mm -hmm. And they're all uniquely different. So, so Guam will, will have uh, sighting challenges uh, yeah. of its own. <laughs> uh, so I'm glad you asked the, or that you made the, the comment earlier uh, to kind of put the context of Next Generation Interceptor uh, in the uh, temporal space that mm -hmm. it's post SRR on its way to PDR. So yeah. we, we still have a long way to go yeah. uh, on that program. Yeah. So Guam is a PB-23 architecture. So mm -hmm. okay. we haven't really started uh, the program, but the nice thing about <clears throat> PB-23, it does lay down uh, the basic architecture of mm -hmm. the systems that will go on to Guam. So, so I can talk a little bit about yes, that. Yeah. Uh, the department did fund us uh, at a level that allows us to start environmental impact surveys, mm -hmm. that allows us to do the siting work. We just finished our second, uh, what we call a siting summit uh, last week. My team was out there for a couple weeks, uh, met with all the major leadership out in Hawaii and, mm -hmm. and on Guam, and then walked every single candidate site that's out there. Okay. Uh, it's not final, mm -hmm. uh, but we have a very good feel for at least technically and operationally where things should go okay. in order for it to function as a system. Uh, and that partnership is pretty amazing. It's, it's primarily with the Army. So if you look at the, the PB23 budget submittal, you will see that uh, there's a MDA portion, which is the ballistic yeah. missile defense uh, capability and the hypersonic missile defense capability. Mm -hmm. And then the Army brings in cruise missile defense. And what's great is both systems kind of have a crossover um, in what they can do. And so the integration of those into a command suite Suite with command and control battle management on top of it is the basic architecture. Okay. So you can think of a number of radars that ensure we meet the requirement, mm -hmm. which is persistent 360 degree coverage, right, because of the evolved threat. And it's an island in a very interesting uh, geographic location. Um, so, so that's what we're, we're doing now, working very hard across the Army, Navy as the executive agent uh, on Guam. Mm -hmm. You know, they own the land. Uh, they're working uh, with, with the territory there, with the governor, uh, to negotiate those spaces for us to uh, have the, uh, the, the different system assets uh, in place. Okay. Um, and, and just to, to add to this, um, in terms of the lessons learned that you may be getting from Guam, what are you hope hoping this will answer for maybe some other uh, things you're looking at, like cruise oh, missile a, defense of the homeland. Um, yeah, there's a laundry list of lessons, again, because again, you haven't really even started, right? Mm -hmm. uh, there's a lot of lessons that you learn from assumptions you make before you ever get to the decision, and then the reality hits mm -hmm. when you get on the ground, right? Yeah. Siting will be tough. Yeah. That's a very constrained space, yeah. so, so we know that to, to be a fact. Um, we know the sizing and the requirements on the sensors that we will need. Mm -hmm. uh, we know uh, where you can and cannot put live ordnance. Mm -hmm. right? that, that's, that's always a constraining factor. So when you think about uh, transporting yourself to some other location, whether it's in the United States or, or abroad, you, you have to worry about explosive arcs and those sorts of things where you, mm -hmm. where you place those. You have to worry mm -hmm. about the electromagnetic interference of, of the radars. Yeah. So one of the first conflicts we had, uh, and it's, it's been in the press already, uh, but I think it's resolved, is if you're going to build a hospital on this site and you have a radar over here, is it okay to put radar energy through that site where you bring medevac helicopters yeah. in? The answer is no. Yeah. Right? So we have to go resolve those sorts of things.